Welcome to CivilNet. My guest is Viken Chaterian, journalist, analyst, familiar with the Middle East, familiar with Central Asia, who's just returned from a trip to the Middle East, specifically to Iraq and to Turkey. And we're going to talk with Viken about Syria. Viken, welcome back to CivilNet. Thank you, Zalpi. Um, Viken, you went, you talked to people who've been coming and going to Syria, Syrians themselves. You know, one of the things that comes up again and again in conversation, especially here in Armenia, especially with the huge Syrian Armenian community that's here, is that they often don't know why they should support the coalition. They are beginning to understand that perhaps this is the beginning of the end for Assad, but they don't know yet whether the coalition is really what they want. In other words, is the coalition still a one message coalition, that is Assad has to go, or have they begun to understand that the, their potential constituency still needs to be convinced that this is good for them, good for Syria? Um, I think the problem in Syria is that now there's no one voice saying we want this kind of Syria after Assad is gone. Uh, the coalition is an expression of will uh, pushed a lot by outside forces so that Syrian political elite says, uh, we want Assad gone. But after that, what kind of Syria comes after Assad is gone? There's no unified consensus on that. Is there a discussion at least? Is there a discussion at least? Uh, there is a very strong discussion. There's enormous uh, controversy about that from very radical Islamist uh, visions of uh, Sharia rule, uh, Sharia law being uh, the, the reference for Syria afterwards, to people saying we started this revolution for freedom, uh, for self-determination, so that no one comes and tells us again in the name of higher values we will impose a dictatorship on you. So the debate is going on. It's a, it's a very important one. It's not an easy one to, uh, to, uh, to direct, but it's a, it's a debate which is taking a, a which is going on in the, in the entire Middle East. It's not something typical of Syria. So the message of the coalition is that we want Assad gone, but also it's, um, it's a way to reassure the international community and Syria's people that there's a common will. But I think the reality behind that is that there's an enormous fragmentation of uh, political visions, political interests, and armed groups behind that kind of window dressing. In other words, the discussion about religion, about sectarianism, is being conducted in the context of politics. This has not been reduced to a, uh, an argument over which a religious sect will perhaps take over if indeed the Alawites lose control. Um, I think it's evident that the Alawite rule of, of four decades is, is reaching an end. Assad regime with its decision to, to repress uh, the social movement, the revolution uh, in blood by force has failed. We see now Assad's regime's positions retreating day by day from one military position to the next. What will come next is, is clearly um, is going to be articulated around a Sunni identity. Now, my take on that is that there's no unified Sunni identity. There's no unified Sunni political expression. And my fear is that uh, the, um, the future articulation of a political consensus will be a difficult one because the, the repression of four decades and the repression of the last two years, the, the enormous repression, I mean, the, the scale of, of violence that was exercised by the regime of the Syrian people, on the revolution, on politically active people, was, was without limits. Most of the politi politically active and conscious people today are not in Syria. They escaped, they are uh, in exile. So as a result, this political debate will be a, a very difficult one. It will take time uh, until it, it comes to a consensus. The concerns, worries, fears of the Armenian community um, both those who are left in, in Syria, as well as those who are outside, remains that, look, for 20, 30 years, however the regime uh, conducted its internal political affairs, whatever its domestic policies, 
we at least saw some semblance of stability, of peace, of some sort of tolerance. And of course now the fears are great that in this terribly contentious environment, it's only going to get worse. Uh, do you have any reassuring words for them? Um, not really. I mean, what I can say is that it, Armenian community leaders in Syria, they should take into consideration two things. One is what is the best for the community for the future. But the second is a minimum of understanding of what's happening inside Syria. Simply having nostalgia about the past is not enough to, to, to articulate to today's necessary political positions, relations, to, to navigate in these very difficult times to, to keep the community safe as much as possible. The past four decades of Ba'ath rule is gone. I mean, this is gone. Uh, Ba'ath rule is not even present in, in the city center of Aleppo. It's not even present in the suburbs of Damascus. So simply to say that the Ba'ath rule was good for Armenian community is not enough in the past. And second, Armenian uh, community leaders should understand that even if the Ba'ath rule was to a certain degree uh, setting conditions of stability for the Armenian community, it was highly unjust and repressive towards the majority of the Syrians. So in case you don't understand this, you can't understand what's happening politically in the country. And simply having this egoistic and nostalgic um, emotions is, is, is simply not enough. And today the Armenian community needs to understand the complexity of the opposition, needs to understand the complexity of the situation today and try uh, to do its best to, to create dialogue, to create bridges to, to Syria's other uh, groups, social movements, military forces, political opposition, uh, next to its traditional uh, understanding and contacts with the old regime. As far as you know, are there channels of communication between the various elements of the coalition and uh, the remaining Armenian Syrian leadership? Um, those contacts are less than minimal. They are not satisfactory. For example, when the Syrian National Council was found, all Syrian communities took part in that. The only community absent were the Armenians. You know, there was not a single Armenian uh, figure name in the Syrian National Council. The same is with the current coalition. So it's very clear that the Armenians are absent from the new political scene which is emerging inside Syria. So they have no voice in this country. Although they are there and they want to be, to be present in Syria in the future, I hope and I insist. I mean, Armenia, for Armenians, Syria is a very important country. Uh, today, in the past, historically. And I hope it will be the case in the future. And, and to guarantee our Armenian presence in the future, Armenian community leaders have to establish contact and, and understanding with the Syrian opposition forces. On that note, uh, thank you, Viken Chaterian, journalist, analyst in Geneva, uh, on urgent, recent, quick developments taking place within Syria, within the opposition, within the political crisis that perhaps will take uh, some other shape in 2013. Thank you, Viken Chaterian. Thank you for watching CivilNet. Mm -hmm.